Okay, that is much better. So here we are, a couple of days later, we got our packages in the mail uh, with our parts for our Conso 226. Now, if you remember from before, we had our bobbin case in here and there's a lot of play on it. Let's see if I can get you in there closer. So our bobbin case has some play in it. And if you look over here, you'll see that there's a big gap where it touches. And as it turns, it kind of wobbles all over the place. So we have a new bobbin case. And when this goes in, there's a little bit of play there, but not nearly as much as the old one. I also noticed a little bit of wobble. We may possibly have a little bit of a bent shaft on the hook, but we're gonna see how bad it is. If we can adjust this machine and get it working just fine, then it'll be all right. Okay, and then when you're putting together your bobbin case, you have this little half moon shaped piece that goes right in here that holds it in. You want to align the hole right there. Take your screw, put it in there, and then get it started. And then I'm gonna have to put the camera down and use my other hand as well. But I can move this over a little bit and get the other one in. Hopefully this is showing up on camera. This machine was, uh, there's a lady that runs a, a, a shop and this was actually her mother's machine. So she's a second generation at least using industrial machines. And she has purchased the exact same machine, just newer versions. And this machine, she said that she knows her mom has had this machine for over 50 years. So not only does this machine, well, it's getting ready to do a bunch of work for her, but uh, it's been in the family for a while and it's an heirloom. And these industrial machines will last you many, many years. Sometimes it's worth the money that you pay for these machines because they are built to last. And this design really hasn't changed. Okay, there we go, replacement number one. Well, next we can go up to our tension assembly. Got our new assembly right here. So I just bought the entire thing. It's actually cheaper to buy this than to buy the individual pieces. And it even comes with that check spring that was bad. Now one little trick that I do is that I don't just buy one part, I buy multiple parts and it's, it's because I'm really, really just getting started in my business. I've been doing this for, you know, a couple years, 
but I have not amassed uh, very many parts. So what I'll do is when I do buy parts, I will buy some extras so that I have parts on hand to assist other customers and be able to be a little bit faster in moving machines out of, in and out of my shop. All right, so let's take this off and see what we get. Okay, what I'm noticing here is that this hole right here is too small, so the screw won't go in very well, and it's also not in the correct spot, so we're going to use a drill and widen out that hole a little bit. All right, we will see if that made it better. So what I'm doing here with the check spring is there's a little divot on here and I want to make sure the check spring is the end of the check spring is in that divot so that it'll push it all the way down so you get pressure pushing down on that check spring and then we'll install it and we have to get it over this lip right here so this is an adjustable lip so you can adjust where that check spring ends up This screw down here underneath is what's clamping down on the end of this part right here. So the shaft is going through here. This is clamping down on the end of that to hold this in. And then we have the screw up here, which is holding the top in. Now, ideally when the press foot is up, we loosen up our tension and it's not doing it. All right, we need to adjust that. So we're gonna come out again. So what we're looking at right now is, there is on the back of here, there's a little uh, shaft that moves out, pushes out this way when your presser foot is lower is raised so when the, your presser foot comes up this little thing comes out and hits a tab on the back of this assembly which is this right here so this tab has to be adjusted so that when that presser foot comes up the tab pushes this which pushes on a little shaft inside of here and releases your tension see how that releases your tension right there. So we need to adjust that. The next step is to bend it a little bit. These flat pliers are useful for things like this when you don't want to put big old um, marks in here We're using regular pliers. These are actually a tool for jewelry um, I get them on Amazon. I have an Amazon affiliate link below where you could find that. So what we're going to do is we're going to just do a little bend, just a tiny bit, okay? And that may have been too much. So we're about to find out. So again, the reason I'm bending the check spring up every time is because I don't want it to be mashed in between this surface and this because I want this to be flush when we're checking. So now I'm pushing it. Okay. So right now we're, well now we're loose. So I've done it too much because we're loose without the presser foot up. So 
So one thing I'm looking for right now is when I take this off and you look at the alignment of everything and you feel that pressure and then you push it on with the foot, press your foot down, nothing should change when I push this on here. So I should have still the same amount of pressure here. And then when I lift it up, it moved a little bit and we've got lower pressure. So now we're adjusted correctly and we're ready to tighten our screws. So again, this bottom one is on the shaft. And just keep in mind, we're gonna check this because every time you tighten down a screw, you change geometry. So we're going to check it again. And that's looking good. If we need fine tuning, we'll check that when we sew with it. So we've done our bobbin case. We've done our tension assembly. And the last pieces that we have to change out are the presser feet. It's the inner foot that's the issue. So again, this, this machine had been sitting in the back of the shop for years and it had not been used because there were problems with it. Well, we found out what some of those problems were. Uh, and here's another one of those problems. So if you look on the bottom of this foot, it is eaten through the side of it. So this was catching their thread every time and causing the thread to break. And uh, talking with the lady, she doesn't even remember why it was put in the back of the shop, but it was, and you know, we found a few things wrong with it. So this is one of them. And um, now the f these feet are actually made for doing cording. So the reason it ate through on that side is because it was very thin on that side because it was made for cording. So there's actually a divot right here where your cording would go through. Um, and she's not going to be using this machine for cording. So this is just a regular flat bottomed walking foot. So people ask me like, hey, I'm doing, I'm sewing leather, I'm sewing uh, vinyl, I'm doing these things and I'm selling stuff on Etsy. Uh, does this Singer Heavy Duty domestic machine, is it good enough for me or do I need to get an industrial machine? Um, I, here's the real answer to that question, okay? Unfortunately, this is one of those things where I can't give you a yes or no, but I can tell you that if you do buy that Singer and save the money to buy that Singer, you're going to be buying another machine soon because you're going to kill that Singer. If you're doing, if you're using it every day on leather, on heavy fabrics, it's not going to last. It's not made to do that. It will not last for you. So um, if you're sewing every day and selling what you're sewing to customers via Etsy or your own website, anything like that, that's when you need an industrial machine. If you're using it every day, the, the plastic home machines are not built for that. These walking foot machines are great for leather. They're great for um, vinyl because uh, vinyl likes to stick to the feet on domestic machines. And so does leather. A walking foot is made to feed all the layers of your fabric. So it feeds, you know, from the top and from the bottom because it sandwiches that fabric as it moves it and um, you're not gonna have problems when you're using this machine. You will have problems when you're using a home machine and trying to do industrial type uh, work with it. So if you're trying to get your business off the ground and you don't have the money to get even a used industrial machine, then you gotta do what you gotta do. But really the first 
investment you need to make in that business, if it's centered around crafting and sewing, especially heavy materials, you need an industrial machine to be able to ramp that up. Not to mention the speed. So once you get used to sewing that material and making those same uh, seams tens and hundreds of times a day, you're going to be ready for this 3000 stitch per minute sewing machine. So just something to keep in mind. And then you just want to do take a general look at your timing. So the things that I look for on this machine is I want to make sure this needle is going through the center of that hole in the presser foot, and it is. And then you want to lift your presser foot, and you want to make sure that this needle is going through the center of the feed dog on the bottom, which it is. So our alignment's looking good. And then you want to look at your timing. So you want to make sure when this needle is on the upstroke, that that hook goes in and grabs that thread. Now I won't do, um, I found that these manuals that have all the um, measurements on them are not necessarily correct because as a machine ages, those measurements don't really work the same as they used to. And so I want to make sure that this makes a good stitch. I'm more concerned with it making a good stitch than I am of every uh, every alignment being perfect with the machine. So on your bobbin case, this little tab right here goes into a divot that's in the bottom of your needle plate. And we are just barely in there, so this hook needs to come up in order to make sure that it's not going to turn on us. So if you look right here, you can see that this sticks out a little bit and if I move, you'll notice that that little brass piece is the part that moves. That's, that's the bottom of your hook assembly. And so I want the whole hook assembly to move up a little bit. And where you make that adjustment is this gear right here. If you look, you'll see some set screws on there. And I can loosen those and then I can push up just a tad bit so that, you know, we're talking a half a millimeter here of movement in order to get the right alignment. So that's what I'm about to do. Okay, is one screw loosened? Is the other screw loosened and then one is up just a tad? Okay, that is much better. All right, let's get some thread in here and see what we've got. All right, first step, does it pick up the lower thread? It does. So our timing's at least close needle height, all that kind of fun stuff. And we've got some denim. We're going to give that a try just by hand. I uh, don't even know what we're set at for stitch length, but we're going to give it a try. We do have some residual oil and stuff that's getting on my fabric, but that's okay. When you're doing a walking foot machine, you gotta make sure that you get your thread out from the needle hole before you start sewing. All right.
We will give this machine a try. Hopefully you can see that. That is not a bad stitch. That is actually a really good stitch. That is a really good stitch. There you go, mom's machine was fixed by replacing the tension assembly, the bobbin case, and our presser feet, walking feet. Um, the adjustments we had to make, well, we had to adjust the height of this bobbin case so that it would not move around too much on me. Um, it is still a tiny bit loose in there, but that's kind of what you get when you buy the, um, the parts on the internet these days. Uh, also this tension assembly needed a little bit of a adjustment to make sure that it would fit. In total, these parts cost the customer about $70 plus the fee for all the labor for this machine. And there we go.